ever since I purchased the new saw, I've been kind of wondering, oh boy, what am I going to get in the interim? Because I pretty much knew that my saw would sell relatively quick. I was always like, hey, what am I going to get an interim saw? How am I going to find something? And believe it or not, I don't know why, but out here, it was slim pickings for a long time. I kept looking and looking and looking. I sold the saw and then I got into a little bit more of a panic. And so let me show you my new saw. Here it is. As you can see, I may have already done some disassembly here, but nothing I can't explain as I go. Let's get this thing into the shop. Oh, losing screws already. Ta-da! This is my new saw. To me, saw. So, let me give you the story. So, first things first, I found this again on, I think, uh, Craigslist. And um, it was a shop not very far from here where I used to, where I grew up basically in uh, Orange County. And they, um, I didn't find this out till I, I went and looked, but it was a, like a, they make, high-end fixtures for um, retail, I think is what the guy said. So everything's got a story. I show up to this thing and it had quite a story. So um, the first thing is he said that they bought this new and that at that point in time, uh, they had a different foreman in the shop and they used it for like a year, year and a half, um, cutting, I guess, sheet goods or some, some kind. Uh, and this is a 2007 saw, so this is a long time ago. And then a new foreman showed up and switched the entire shop to saw stop, probably because of cow OSHA and all that kind of fun stuff, but whatever. Switched everything to saw stop, and this was rarely used after that. That's the story. I would say I somewhat agree with it after taking it all apart and taking a look at it closely. So I'm going to make a series out of this. First part, tear down, clean up figure out some of the basics. The parts are gonna take a couple of weeks to get here um, from Felder, probably a week for the stuff that's in stock in uh, the US and another week for the stuff that's in um, uh, Europe. So to get here, but I'm gonna make a uh, cleanup and then I'm gonna make a reassembly kind of video. So this could, probably is gonna be a total of two parts. And uh, then uh, hopefully I'll have a really nice wor working saw for the next five months or so until my new saw gets here. And uh, then I'll be selling this off to someone else. A couple of key things. It's four horsepower, single phase, which is really, really cool um, because uh, easier to sell for sure. And I think pretty desirable um, from that perspective. Anyway, we'll see how this goes and I'll kick you along for the ride. The saw came with 14 gauge uh, cable connected to it. Uh, 14 gauge cable does not support 16.7 amps, which is what the plate says on there. It also was extension cord. I don't think that passes code. So when I got um, this Laguna, um, boring machine uh it came with the wrong cable because the person didn't understand how to do three phase and so it had 12 gauge s-o-o-w um, cord which is really good for an extension cord and uh but it only has three conductors you need four conductors for three phase so obviously the guy can never make that work um this is going to be perfect for this one it's it's the right size maybe slightly overkill for 16.7 amps but this will be perfect. Only problem is, and I'm going to show it to you here real quick. When they decided to wire this the second time, I don't know why, they ran this cable directly into the electrical box and they bypassed this gland. Well, traditionally, um, Felder um, come with their own power cords. 
and they're usually pretty decently long, but they don't have the thickest outside jacket. Like they're not an SOW like this is. So the gland that was probably here wouldn't have supported it. So I'm gonna have to get, I'm gonna have to take this apart, drill this out to fit a bigger gland that will support this size cable. Now I do think the hole in the chassis is gonna be no problem. The gland will fit right there and I can go through there. But the whole goal now is I'm gonna wire this the way it was from the factory. Wire will come in the back, come in through some holes that are down here and then into this area right here. Um, and kind of cool how they build it. The motor comes with a disconnect um, built on it. So you just unplug the motor from it and this whole thing comes off the front. So anyways, that's um, one cool thing I don't have to spend money on is this. And then I, you know, I will have to get a plug on the end of it to plug into you know, a 240 outlet up here. PK, when you say cable gland, what do you mean? What I mean is this. So this has a built-in strain relief and you put the cable through it. And then when you have it in the chassis, you crank down on this to the point where it starts to drag on the cable and it doesn't let you yank it out. So this goes into the chassis on the backside to keep it from pulling out of the chassis. And then I'm gonna to have to drill this hole out over here to fit this, which is gonna be fun. So step drill for that. So anyways, we should probably get moving with that. One other thing I didn't discuss. So this is again the shroud for the dust collection on the blade. There's a separator that for the, the um, scoring blade and they put a larger blade in and instead of loosening this bolt and spinning it like you're supposed to, to give yourself more space, I guess somebody, it looks, you can see that looks like a hammer. <laughs> Sorry, it looks like little hammer marks in there where somebody decided to hit it. So um, it's, just, it's just aluminum. So I'm gonna pop this out and try to just, you know, like bang it back to where it's supposed to be. But this is just a separation supposed to be between the main blade and the scoring blade when you have a scoring blade in it. You just rotate it when you're not using it as this little sign would say, but I guess they didn't listen to the sign. Now, I'm not trying to be that guy, but how hard is that? I mean, I just step bit. Now I'm no more, uh, no more penetration of a bunch of sawdust into the control box. So good to go. Well, it was in a shop. So, this was fully packed with sawdust. So easy enough to remove from the saw, probably make it a little easier to clean. So I'm not gonna record every single thing, but I'll show you bits and pieces as it comes apart. Quick update. So I don't know why the guy had those angle iron pieces on the bottom of it to support it. I mean, the thing is, more than stable enough, I think, to take care of itself. But anyways, uh, yeah, took those off and then also was able to readjust this door for that covers up the blade and the scoring blade so that it works nice. And now I'm going to get some evapor rust going and then try to clean all this stuff on the top off also. So bucket of evaporust ready to go. So there's not much that needs to go into the evaporust except for the uh, riving knife, definitely. A couple of bolts here and then the um, bar for the um, fence. Definitely need to figure out how to get all that surface rust off of that without turning it into a disaster. So um, I'm going to dump these in there and get going. Feels like there might be some weird residue on this slider so figure we should maybe try some acetone first Yeah, a little bit maybe. Definitely feels less sticky and weird.
Okay, that's not bad. Next. I think there's some paint that I need to get off there. Whatever this is. Gonna see if those are pieces of paint or not. Yeah. It's something. All right. Go for round two. Now you could put bow shield or the stuff that I've been using recently, you know, the carbon method stuff. You can put it on this. I don't know if it's as good of a protection. It's not going to protect it from scratching or anything like that, but um, it does seem to be a little slicker. So, okay. Yeah, a little dirty in there. Again, look. Nobody does this to a piece of saw that they buy used. But I'm a little nuts. All right. What about the front here? It's got some weird stuff on the front of it. Now this slider, you know, it has this, I don't know, type of uh, channel on the side of it that um, actually works with a um, table I have and a few other accessories along with the outrigger. So um, when you put the things off and on, especially the outrigger, the things definitely get like damaged as you go but I can definitely see that they were putting the outrigger um, in one spot because it didn't get damaged pretty much anywhere around where at least as much where they had it Well, I cleaned up real nice. Okay, so I'm really leaning towards that orange piece getting powder coated and the two tables powder coating those. Pretty inexpensive. And uh, I can turn it from looking like an older saw into one of the newer saws. So I would take that orange one and that would now become uh, like dark gray to match how the new K500s look. Um, I just think it looks more contemporary per se. So I'm leaning there. Got a couple of quotes that seem really reasonable. So. All right. That's looking better for sure. Probably something going on here too, but all right. 
Bummer that they damaged that X roll so bad, but what are you gonna do? All right, let's clean this part up. This is all just, you know, extruded aluminum, so it cleans up real nice with this. You might be asking Paul, are you planning on taking this um, slider off of the saw? The answer to that would be no. Although it definitely needs to be calibrated because it seems a little low right there. We'll get there. Yeah. Done with the acetone. Let's move on to some car stuff to try to clean off the paint. See how this does. Hmm. Little cobwebs there. So now considering that this is 17 years old, these stickers right here are from Felter and they're actually when you're built. So when you get a new machine from them, these stickers are all over the place and they are actually telling you what's built into the saw. They don't mean anything to me. I don't know the what the codes mean, but the fact that they're still on the saw 17 years later Pretty comical. All right, well, she looks a lot better. I've got to do the same thing to all the other parts. We'll get them going. Down there in the corner, they took off the access panel but I don't really know why, so I'm going to put it back in the meantime. Um, yeah. Oh, boy. Maybe they didn't know how to do it. Oh, wait. Maybe I didn't know how to do it. Have to loosen these up. Oh no. Maybe it didn't tighten up right anymore. Smaller one. Let's see if it works. Yeah, I think we're in there now. So this is one of the arms for the close one. Bye. That doesn't want to go in there. There we go. First one. And second one. There. So I have to bolt these two here and then to the side. And then all of this stuff right here does all the adjustments. Believe it or not, the, they don't mount to the side of the cast iron, the uh, extensions. So. I'm gonna put that one over there and then we'll get um, kind of moving here. 
So these three screws went in the body and held on the orange plate. So I'm just going to put them back where they were. But at least they look black again, which is nice. No little rust on them. Okay. So I'm not going to lose it. There's a guy who's a, I don't know, I'd call him a friend, David Best. Um, if you're a person that's on the Felder's owners group, he's been on there for a long, long, long time. And he's built a bunch of the information around how to set up these sliders. And uh, pretty much a genius at this stuff. So this slider, since it's shorter, only has four bolts to align it with, which makes it, I think, infinitely easier than the longer ones. So uh, I know I'm going to have to adjust it. I'm just feeling that it won't be as much of a pain in the butt as it would be if I was doing it with uh, one that had six or eight bolts. So, or maybe they only have four or eight. I'm not sure. I'm not sure it's going to get any better than this. So I'm going to clean it off and then I'm going to do a little polish on it real quick and see what it looks like. A little buffing with my little Milwaukee tool and it looks fantastic. Saved. All right. Let's see what we can do with this top. Actually, just dump it on. Clean it up first with a little bit of acetone. Gross. Do it again. Oh, hey, it's not doing the whole thing. Now this little lip on the back of this is pretty cool because I have, like I was talking about before, these um, tables that fit on this, you know, actually fit on the back too. So even though there's only a table here that goes all the way out to the end of the fence and there's another one that kind of dead ends here, so you don't have necessarily an outfeed fence, you can get from Felder one that actually clicks onto the back of it and is an outfeed fence for it, which is pretty cool. All right. Now let's move on to the big stuff. So I have a bunch of this Scotch-Brite stuff in three different, um, I guess, grits, three different levels of coarseness. I don't know. Anyways, this is one that I think will go great with this. This ballast oil stuff does pretty good. It kind of helps you get some of this stuff off. So let's see. Start this. Don't need a little more. Stuff smells fantastic.
I think it's going to work pretty good. You could put a random orbit on this thing and go for broke, but the way that they do the felders, it's a pretty coarse fly cut. So it really looks weird if you take the easy route, I guess. Backside here a little better. Clean up real nice. All right, probably should have brought some towels over to start with. Oh, yeah, looking great. Definitely looking good. Surprising what a little bit of TLC on a cast iron surface will do. Okay, so next, I usually go to PB2000. Throw this on there, and then I'll do a little more. But this time I'll do it with a, with a finer grit. See how it turns out. So just a Scotch-Brite lighter pad. I mean, it's gray pad. Um, I, ended up, I ended up finding these at a um, place that I think does knives locally like people that make knives. Anyway, they were selling them by the box and way cheaper than everywhere else. And I'm always down for a good deal. I think there's some paint on this too from before. This time we're going to die and this PG valve is pretty slick too. I don't know what we're doing with that other stuff. We just spread it down a little bit. It's not high, so. All right, it's more towels. Now, my carbon cleanse from the carbon company, the cleaning company that I'm talking about is the best out of all these things. Yeah, I have left, so. The carbon cleanse from the carbon company, the coating company that I've been talking about is the best out of all these things. And I think I have a little left, so why not? Carbon cleanse is when you're doing it, so it's called reconditioning oil. Same thing.
you can actually see it taking up some of the dirt, which is just super cool. I think it's actually the best part of their three things that they sell. Um, and they don't even hype it that much, but I don't know what's in it, but it's really good. It doesn't take that much. I'm not going to put the carbon method on it yet because I'm still going to be working on this thing and I think it'd be, make better sense to do the carbon method at the very end if I'm going to do it. But uh, I'll put on something in the meantime, some of the other PB2000 or whatever. That stuff's really good. Oh yeah. It's like new, almost. New second hand, as Matt Armstrong would say. That is looking pretty good for a 17 year old saw. So I can't see either of the drink marks. The drink mark that was over here is gone. Yeah, I don't see either of the drink marks. I think I could go farther. I could leave some of that on longer, the carbon cleanse longer, and I think I could probably get some more of the stuff out of it, but I think we've done enough. Hopefully, you guys can see the difference. Let me get in here. That's pretty good. So I'm gonna put some of the, this PB2000 on it as a protectant. And then we'll move on to the rest of it. Okay. I got back a quote for the power coat, powder coating including taking the orange part on the front and changing it to, to gray, um, to dark gray, like the newer machines are. And uh, I think it's really affordable. So although it's just gonna be for me to make myself feel good about what I'm using, um, it's not gonna get me money for it when I finally sell this thing off, I'm sure. but. Um, it'll look great and uh, it'll also slide, I think, better. The wood will slide better on it than it will because pretty much all of the powder coating is off of the tables in a few areas. And they didn't clean the wheel on the bottom of the fence that moves back and forth. And so it left a lot of marks on there. I cleaned the wheel off took all the gook and dirt out of it, so it probably won't do that again. So that bent piece of aluminum that was inside there, that uh, came back real nice. And you actually rotate it out of the way and you're using something beside the 250. So I'm not gonna have the scoring blade in there, so I rotated it for now. And let's get to installing some of this stuff back in here. Okay, so I'm reinstalling this shroud right here. Um, because, and I would put the other shroud in too, but I'm going to change that, um, that belt when I get the belt in. So can't do that quite yet, but there's two, you know, uh, Allen key bolts with, there's, um, a, uh, plastic bush on the back to keep it away from the side. And then there's two tens that are on this side to attach it and pretty simple. Again, this isn't like the most complicated saw, but I probably shouldn't have tightened the those yet so I can get these in. There we go. Oh, there's a 
Mixer seems to be in. Let's get a wrench. There we go, finally, jeez. Okay, tighten these two. Okay, so we're good there. So now, change the belt, figure out how to install that other belt, <laughs> or maybe not, and then uh, put on that cover, and then we're good there. So the outrigger cleaned up pretty good. So we got that going on. Right now I'm in the middle of trying to take the rust off of the main bar. So right now, I think we're about as far as I'm gonna get with this. And then I'm just gonna take it out, rinse it off, and I'm gonna have to do a little polishing, I think, of this thing to make it look pretty. But all the rust is gone. That brings part one to a close. So um, we're cleaned up, got a lot of parts back on it, got the parts off of it that are gonna go to powder coat. And uh, really all I've got left to do from a cleanup perspective is I gotta spend some loving time with the cross cut fence, which is gonna take a little bit of time, but that should come off pretty, pretty good, pretty easy. There's a bent piece I have to fix though too. She's looking great. I need to polish up the um, bar a little bit more. Um, but other than that, like, we're getting there. So uh, I probably am ready to plug it in at some point in time too, but I'm gonna wait, um, see how long the belt's gonna take to come and then we'll go from there. So uh, thanks again, part two is coming.